Hey, I'm Jake, and today I'm talking about designing 100-somethings. Okay, in episode three, I talked about four things that every aspiring artist should be doing to get, to, to get better. Uh, one of those things uh, was taking on a personal project, or starting a project and finishing it. Um, now the problem there is you can kind of get lost deciding on what project to take on like should I do a children's book should I do a comic and if so how long should I make it how long should the story be what should the story be who are my characters I got to design characters uh, and so what, what that can oftentimes lead to is a lot of um, spinning of your creative wheels and that's something you want to avoid the main thing to remember when doing a project is it's all about getting better and finishing the, the, the thing that you're working on. Uh, and so if you're starting to spin your creative wheels, um, I would suggest doing something like the Design 100 Somethings project. Um, the thing about the Design 100 Somethings project, and I'll, I'll get into what it is specifically in, in a bit, but the thing about it is it's easy to start, it's challenging, and the best part is it's finishable. Okay. Now this is different from the Draw 100 challenges you might have seen around um, people doing on the internet. And that's where you, you pick something that you are not really good at, something that you probably try to avoid drawing, and then you force yourself to draw it 100 times. And in the process, you familiarize yourself with the, the structure of it, the, uh, you know, the characteristics of it, and, and you become better by drawing it 100 times. And um, that's a good project for getting really good at drawing something like, you know, say you really stink at drawing hands. Okay, so you draw 100 hands, and your 100th hand is way better than your first hand, okay? Now the Design 100-somethings project is different in that it's not so much about getting better at drawing one specific thing. What it's about is pushing through your imagination barriers, okay? And here's what it is. The Design 100-somethings um, project is taking one subject, one thing, and doing a hundred different variations on that thing, okay? So uh, this is something that concept artists know about. This is something that professional graphic designers and illustrators know about. Uh, they're very familiar with it because when they're given uh, uh, the task of designing a new character or designing a vehicle or a logo or a, a set piece for a scene, when they're given that task, they can go through 20 or 30 different um, design passes before they they even settle on 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 an area where they're where they're close. You know, sometimes it might even be a hundred passes, uh, and that that's a lot of times what happened at, at Blue Sky uh, with characters or even with uh, with some of the environments I worked on is is you'd you'd go through every conceivable possible angle and design and the director would say well you know it still needs a little bit of this it still needs a little bit of that so you come back with with a different design and and you know different variation on it and eventually you you settle into something that that feels very unique and 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 appealing uh, and it might be very different from what you initially started out in okay um, that, that's not to say that sometimes you don't nail the design on the first try but I'd say more often than not, it takes several passes to find that that truly unique and appealing design. Okay, so this challenge is it's not about speed. It's what it's really about is is your creative mileage. Okay, you want to cover a lot of design ground and push through those creative barriers to reach places where you 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 never would have imagined when you started. Okay, so here's some things I want you to um, to remember as you embark upon this project. The first thing is creative creativity thrives on constraints you know a lot of people think you need to have the freedom to create whatever you want I'm sort of the opposite opinion in that it's through uh, through constraints uh, is where you really dig in and you find uh, true creativity okay so when you take on this challenge build into it a few constraints and one of those is when you're choosing your something uh, don't go broad but be very specific so instead of challenging yourself to design something like a uh, hundred different aircraft, uh, which you know that could range from anywhere from massive airships to like uh, a jetpack a guy's a guy's wearing on his back, right? I want you to narrow it down to something like a hundred different 
single seater fighter planes. Okay, that gets very narrow, and and you're staying in that one range, and you're trying to find um, uh, how many different variations you can do on that one thing, and that's when you really start to think outside the box, because when you get stuck, you can't just say, okay, now I'm going to go draw a blimp. You have to stick with the you know the the the, uh, the fighter plane uh, constraint that you had set up. Okay, and that that goes for anything that you want to choose. Uh, whether it's you're designing 100 um, uh, monsters, or I would say if you're designing 100 dinosaurs, that you stick to. I'm going to design 100 different. You know, maybe you're doing uh, creating your own kind of animals or creatures that you stick with. I'm going to design 100 bipedal monsters or, or dinosaurs or something like that. If it's vehicles, that you stick with a certain range of vehicles. Like I'm going to design 100 different um, futuristic tanks or 100 different. Um, uh, you know, armored personnel carriers or so, something like that. Um, and so th that's something I, I, I really want you to, to stick with when you start this thing is to really narrow down and be specific on what your subject matter is. Another constraint is to pick a tool you might be uncomfortable with, okay? Or maybe it's a medium that you'd like to practice more. And what you can do is, is Pick that tool or pick that medium, whether it's it's watercolor or it's you know you're, you're, you have a certain kind of pen that you're not very good with, and you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to do this whole challenge using only this pen or drawing or creating it only in this medium, um, and that's what I did with uh, with my challenge, which I'm going to uh, flip through and show you um, after this is is that. I uh, I wasn't very good at, at uh, inking or I wasn't confident inking. I had wobbly lines and um, I just I wanted to get better at it, and so I knew that would only come with just lots and lots of line mileage. So I figured drawing 100 somethings was a great way to learn to steady my hand and to get a really good solid line. So I guess just to talk about uh, you know these these pages that I've been flipping through, right? So this is my my draw 100 somethings project, which eventually grew into draw 200 somethings. And uh, it really, it didn't start out that way. It started out, uh, I had just drawn the first character and I put a number one on him and I thought, oh, you know, he's, he's some little robot guy. He's like a helper robot. Uh, and I named him uh, ReadyBot. And I thought, okay, well, 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 if he's number one, what's number two look like? And so I drew number two. And before I knew it, I had drawn three or four of them. And I thought, well, you know, let's, let's see where I could take this. Let's see how many different variations I can do with this character the constraint giving myself of maintaining that design motif of the the circular face the round eyes the mouth and then keeping the the design all uh, I guess cohesive as far as feeling like um, all the limbs and and the, the body shapes are very gummy and very pliable um, and then the other other constraint was to to keep it in simple lined ink to not do any shadowing or hatching or, or anything like that but just to to learn how to draw uh, smooth simple lines and and uh, it turned out to be a very rewarding and and um, uh, just a challenging project because um, as you can see now I'm in the I'm in the 170s right. But before then, I, w I would reach, I reached 25, I reached 30, and I thought, okay, this is getting hard. I got to really think about how I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with these guys, how I'm gonna uh, figure out more designs for these guys. And it wasn't until maybe 75 where I was like, okay, that's it. There's no more designs possible. I have exhausted every avenue for these characters. And then something clicked, you know, some little spark happened and it pushed me through past 100. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm on a roll now. I'm going to keep going with these. I'm going to, I'm going to take this all the way to 200. And I think that's something as you get into your own project, uh, design 100 project is that it's going to start getting hard and that's when you have to push through. And that's when you really have to start thinking outside the box and finding shapes and finding designs that, um, that you would have never thought of the first time around. Um, the thing to point out too is is it's okay to get stuck. That that's going to happen. Put it down for a while. Come back to it later. This 200 characters uh, I started in May of 2007, and I did the last one today. 
uh, before I did this video. And that's why I was like, oh, I should do a video on these guys. Uh, and so anytime I was bored, anytime I couldn't think of anything, uh, I would sit down and I would draw one of these guys and that would kind of get me out of my funk and then I could go on to drawing other things. And so it's, it's not a project that needs to be done quick or fast. It's just something to, to keep you going, to keep your mind uh, working and to help you to push through uh, those creative barriers that you, that you might have set up for yourself. Um, and there we are, number 200, the last guy. And, you know, it's, it's, if you compare him to uh, the first guy that I drew, you could still see that, you know, they're, they're in the same design world. They're in the same, you know, they, they have some cohesiveness to them, but definitely one has, has uh, been the benefit of having 200 designs before it. All right, that's it. Uh, I just want to say good luck if you take on this project. It's going to be a challenge, but man, it is fun and it's really rewarding. It's crazy to see the stuff that you can come up with uh, as you push through those um, uh, imagination barriers. A couple things to remember uh, when you're doing this. Um, don't forget to, to number them and also date them. That's something I forgot with uh, these drawings is I didn't date them. So I don't know when I drew what. I just knew when I started the first one and when I finished the last one. I know there were big gaps in the middle. So I think for your own personal records, it's just cool to have a little date on there and you can chart your progress and see where you've been. Another thing is if you get stuck or if you're, you're not sure where to go as you're, as you're going through this, these 100, is start to look for patterns. And if you've been drawing uh, you know, 10, let's say you're doing the airplane thing. Uh, if you're drawing 10 different planes and, and they all have like these soft, curvy, uh, fluid lines to them, uh, work against that pattern. Maybe try something edgier, maybe try something a lot more mechanical or rugged. Um, the, the same goes if, if you are seeing patterns, what can you do to, to push that pattern along and, and, and to, uh, to reflect that pattern? So that's something to look out for. And lastly, share your work. Uh, that's one of the best parts is to see what other people are doing and to show off what you've been doing. It will inspire others who are doing this challenge as well. All right, that's it, bye.